Greetings, and welcome to Etzheim's weekly podcast, recorded live in Richardson, Texas. We invite you now to join us for one of our synagogue's Shabbat messages. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Well, we are you receiving the emails from uh, Etzheim, right? So you know what I'm going to talk about. Uh, yeah, even better. <laughs> About being filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, you know, I summarized everything in this email, so read emails of Eitzheim, and you will know what's going on. Uh, for last two Saturdays, for last two Shabbats, we were celebrating sort of Shavuot, the giving of the Holy Spirit. And we had two great drushes for this particular subject so far. Very two different drushes, actually. And both of them were exceptionally good. And today I'm going to talk about evangelism as a consequence of the giving of the Holy Spirit, as the work of the Holy Spirit and as part of being filled by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read many passages from the Bible, and I hope that you have your Bible uh, sort of handy, print, uh, printed, or in your digital device, whatever device it is. Uh, I'm not going to have PowerPoints today, but you're used to that. Only once in a time history for my drush, I had a PowerPoint a little bit, and it was, uh, well, probably the most controversial drush I ever given here. So I decided I'm not going to have a PowerPoint because it can ruin everything. <laughs> so uh, when I do drush, you better bring your Bible. So when you read, uh, when you read in, the, in the Eitzheim News that, there, that Vladimir is giving drush, immediately remember, bring the Bible. Because you're not going to see the Bible on your screen, you're going to see, you're going to look in your own Bible, in your favorite translation. By the way, I would recommend you bring your Bible every Shabbat to its high. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me start uh, by uh, bringing your attention to a couple passages from the Gospel uh, of Luke. Very beginning, Luke chapter 1, verses 13, and, uh, 13 through 17. And now, angel of the Lord talks to Zacharias about the fact that Zacharias is going to have a son. It was a prophecy. It was even better. The angel was talking to Zacharias. And we read here in this passage, Luke chapter 1, verses 13 through 17. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias. For your petition has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear your, your a son, and you will give him the name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and he will drink no wine, no liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, while yet in his mother's womb. And he will turn back many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God. And it is he who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous, so as to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. It's one of the few occasions Luke mentions the statement filled with the Holy Spirit. And here you can notice in this passage what, will, what it will cause. 
in John. Namely, he will turn back many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God. He will prepare the hearts. He will, uh, he will talk to disobedience. He will try to convert them to the lifestyle of the obedience. So in this very first passage in the Gospel of Luke, talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit means to change this world, to impact this world, to lead people to the way of righteousness, to the only God, no, to the only divine and righteous way of life. It's, it's about bringing people back to their God. It's about repentance. It's about return. That's, I remind you, it's the first occasion that feeling with the Holy Spirit is mentioned in the Gospel of Luke. And actually, Luke, in, the, in his Gospel, and also in the book of Acts, is the one who mentions feeling with the, being filled with the Holy Spirit the most of all other New Testament authors. Let's, look, uh, let's now look to, uh, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, the same, uh, the same chapter, verses 67 through 80. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit, so John's father, and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited us and accomplished redemption for his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of David, his servant. As he spoke by the mouths of his holy prophets from, old, from of old, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show mercy toward our fathers and to remember his holy, co uh, holy covenant, the oath which he swore to Abraham, our father, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our en enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give to his people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins, because of their tender mercy of our God, with which the sunrise from on high shall visit us, to shine upon those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child continued to grow and to become strong in spirit. And he lived in the deserts until the day of his public appearance to Israel. So Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and he prophesied. And when we think of prophecies today, it's usually like, tell me about the future. Tell me about what's going on. Just predict me something because we passionately want to know what's next. We need guidance and we need some encouragement. So we are looking for the prophecy that tells us the future. Here, it's mentioned that Zacharias prophesied, but interestingly, not first of all about the future, but first of all about the past or about what just happened and about to happen again. God visited his people. God gives salvation because he is merciful. He transforms this world. God visits this world. God impacts this world. So being filled with the Holy Spirit means, among several other meanings, means to prophesy, to speak about God's salvation, what he has done in Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah, our Savior. 
I'm not going to, I'm not willing to compromise all other workings of the Holy Spirit. But this one is probably the most important. And it corresponds to the teaching of our Messiah, Yeshua himself. And now I'm going to quote some, or to read some very famous passages. And I'm not going to tell you anything else, anything new, sorry, but I'm going to remind you something what in many churches and in Messianic congregations, unfortunately, is being forgotten. We talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit, walk by the Spirit, and Spirit working in us. And sometimes we forget about the very reason for God to give the Spirit, for God to fill us with the Spirit, for God to baptize, to baptize us with the Spirit. Look with me at the Gospel of John, Chapter 15, verses 26 and 27. Yeshua tells his disciples, When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, right? Who proceeds, proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness of me. And you will bear witness also, because you have been with me from the beginning. So the Spirit of God will come. Yeshua will send this Spirit. And what will this Spirit do? Look at the in the text. If you have your Bibles in your smartphone, in app, my iPhone, or just print it, what is uh, what I normally prefer, although it's too heavy to carry these days, age. Uh, but uh, but just uh, like look in the, look in <laughs> look at this passage. What is written there? Who proceeds from the Father, He will bear witness of me. So the Holy Spirit comes to testify of Yeshua. To proclaim Yeshua, to make Yeshua known. And Yeshua says, and you will bear witness also. Well, they were with him from the beginning, but the Spirit will come and enable them. We are going to read this famous passage a little bit later. But Spirit will come and enable them to witness of Yeshua. John chapter 16, verse 7 through 11. John 16, verses 7 through 11. Yeshua speaks to his disciples again. But I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper shall not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. And concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you no longer Behold me. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of, he, of this world has been judged. You see the point? It's another passage Yeshua speaks of, giving, of the giving of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is coming, and what is he doing? He heals all, all our diseases. Gives us much joy and happiness and money and prosperity in this life? Well, maybe to some. And certainly he is, God is great healer. And certainly he, he does miracles. And certainly he is almighty. But that's not the only and not the solely reason of the Holy Spirit to come. There is something very explicitly mentioned by Yeshua himself. Namely... 
He will tell the world and convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. He will speak to the people about believing in Yeshua. So if we have this spirit, there is something what we already learn from the passages that we read. When spirit comes, we are enabled to do what spirit does. It's like, you know this passage, be holy because, of, uh, because I am holy, says the Lord. With other words, it's do as I do. When spirit comes and dwells in us, we are enabled to do the work of the Holy Spirit by impacting this world and by changing this world for better. And for better, I mean not just ecology or, uh, or, some, uh, or something like what you do for the environment. And not just uh, doing something for like, plants or animals. What is a good thing? But first of all, you bring this world back to the Creator, to God, to the God of Israel. And the only way to the Father is Yeshua HaMashiach. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. And if we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we do the same. Because the Holy Spirit works that in us. Now look uh, with me at the very famous passage, Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. And gathering them together, it's Yeshua does it before he is gone for a season. He commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father has promised, which he said, you heard of from me. For John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And so when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. So the Spirit comes and gives power. The power for what? To move the mountains? Maybe. But that's not what is mentioned in this passage. The power is to be his witnesses. It's explicit reason. Probably I would say the main reason the Holy Spirit is given. You see, we consider spirit given to us for the sake sometimes, mistakenly I would say, because of our egoism, so because we like your, my, ourselves so much, we consider the spirit was given to us for our own sake. Fill me with the spirit for me, be so joyful and rejoice and be glad. Give me the spirit, more of the spirit just for, to do something in our congregation. So he is filled with the spirit. He will pray for me. I will be immediately healed. That's all nice. That's all good. But that's not the main reason. Because the reason of the giving of the spirit is to impact this world. This world can be impacted by our prayer, by our joy, by our lifestyle, by what we do, by, by mercy, by good deeds, by everything, what Spirit produces us. But the feeling of the Holy Spirit is not just for this building. 
It has to shine out of this building in the whole world. Yeshua told them, stay in Jerusalem. Stay in, for example, like in a building. You can maybe call this building the church or whatever. But when the Spirit will come and fill you, He will give you the power and you will go out. So being filled with the Spirit, it's not just be here in this building and just, hallelujah. That's all good, but that's not all. It's not just feeling like pushed, moved by the Spirit during the beautiful worship that we have here in its time. It's more than that. It's not just being like touched by the Spirit when the Torah moves in, in this building. Listen, the Spirit of God works here. Amen to that. But His power is given not only and not primarily for this room and for this building. His power is giving for the outside of this building. This power is not giving for the place where disciples used to stay back then. It was said you will go to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, and to the end of the earth. You will go. You will move. You will leave. I already talked about that last time I preached here, but look. We got to forget this mentality that we come to meet God in this building. And when we leave this building, we say bye to God till next Saturday. No. The presence of God in us Amen. is not stronger here than in the marketplace, in the place we work, in the place we study. And the place we live, the power of His Spirit in us, possibly even stronger there. When we are His witnesses, not just to encourage each other what is important and serve each other, but when we transform and impact this world by the power of the Spirit who lives in us. And now a couple examples. We, uh, we already heard from Acts chapter 2 uh, in previous uh, drushes. And you read this passage. And it's a uh, it's very uh, significant, very important passage. So the Spirit was given on the day of Pentecost, Shavuot. And uh, you remember what happened there? The, the disciples started speaking in different tongues, languages. So it was, it was just interesting noise. <laughs> going on. But this noise, at least at that, very, uh, at that very moment, in that particular place, at that per, in that particular passage, was something what everybody else could understand. From all other countries, everybody could listen and understand what they were telling in his own language. And what if just it's like it's not a test, but just try to remember what did they hear? Does somebody remember? What did they hear? Strange, strange languages they never knew. No, they knew this languages. So they said, How is it possible that we, being from so many countries, we hear them speaking our language and our dialect? Speaking of great and mighty works of God. It was not just talking about, oh, weather is good. Oh, it's too hot today. It's not just, I love to be in Jerusalem. It was not just speaking about like recipe for, for a nice dish. It was not, uh, it was not speaking about like... Uh, well, I'm so in good mood today. No. It was, they were speaking about the mighty and powerful, great works of God. That's what the Spirit did at the feast of uh, Shavuot, 
about 2,000 years ago. You know, different denominations uh, used to argue a lot about what the speaking in tongues means. Even today, there are some arguing about that, but less and less. Because look, we are getting so oppressed uh, or like marginalized by the society slowly. So we need each other. We need, we need each other and it's, it be, it's becoming like, oh, who cares what he speaks? I mean, in what uh, tongue he speaks or tongues, no tongues, who cares? You know, slowly, slowly we just need those who believe in Yeshua. And that's why the churches are coming closer together now and the doctrinal statements of different denominations are getting softer on just abusing, accusing each other of being filled, of not being filled or baptized with the Spirit, or not be, or being, uh, being like almost from the demon. So it's the past. But even in all these discussions, reading books uh, and articles regarding this issue, it's very seldom mentioned what were they speaking about the mighty and powerful great works of God. That's what the Spirit does. Doesn't matter in what tongue and in what language and in what dialect. Acts chapter 4, verses 8 through 12. Now, just a couple of examples how it works from the book of Acts. Peter speaks to the Sanhedrin, to the highest spiritual authority in the Jewish society of that time. And he says, no, not just look. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are on trial today for a benefit done to a sick man as to how this man has been made well, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by this name this man stands here before you in good health. He is the stone which was rejected by you, the builders, but which became the very cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. There was a man who was healed supernaturally and it was for a reason Peter was using that in his address he was filled with the spirit by the way not at the moment as he healed this sick man well he was probably also filled with the spirit in some way but it's not mentioned in the book of Acts what is mentioned in the book of Acts as being filled with the Holy Spirit is he preaches the gospel. He speaks of Yeshua. He delivers the salvation for the people who listen to him. The power, the real power of the Holy Spirit is not in healing, although it's also there. But the primary reason is what is usually called the evangelism. Bringing the mighty, mighty and powerful work of God to the people around you. Through your deeds. But when you fill with the Holy Spirit, through your words. Preaching the gospel without leaving the gospel wouldn't work so well, but preaching the gospel is the evidence, a very powerful evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit. The same chapter, Acts chapter 4, 
verse 31. The disciples praying together. Listen, they're praying together. And then a great things happen. And when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. Now, look what happened. They pray. And because they pray, the walls are shaking. Well, today was the powerful worship. But I haven't noticed the walls shaking yet. But that's okay. It's not a problem. The Spirit of God was at work anyway, and the worship was great, and I was moved, uh, I was moved uh, by one song almost to tears, what is very seldom, uh, not just because of my personality. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, uh, just like they prayed, the walls shaked, and only then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, the, you, see the, you see the thing? Not at the time of prayer. Powerful prayer that shakes the world, the worlds. Not at that time they were filled with the Spirit. They, the worlds were shaken by prayer, not because they were filled with the Spirit. But then they were all well filled with the Spirit of God and began to speak the word of God with boldness. So being filled with the Spirit of God is not to shake the world, worlds and not to move the mountains, first of all. It's first of all to preach the Word of God with boldness. I'm so sorry that in Messianic movement and in Christianity, many disregard or forgot about this. But that's the real work of the Spirit when we filled with the Spirit. Amen. Do, you remember, uh, do you remember Stephen, uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen speaking uh, and being stoned at the end of his speech? The whole chapter 7 of the book of Acts, it's about Stephen preaching to the Jewish people around him, those who killed him at the end. But just before he was, heal, uh, uh, he was killed, in verses, Acts chapter 7, verses 55 and 56. Next thing happens. But being full of the Holy Spirit, he, Stephen, gazed intently into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus, Yeshua, standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open up and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Amen. And then Stephen was killed. Because the people who listened, they couldn't take this powerful testimony of the man who was filled by God, by the Spirit of God, by the Holy Spirit. He saw God, so. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is to see God in a certain way. Not necessarily as a vision, but to know the truth about God and to preach, to speak this truth with boldness. Amen. Amen. And the last example. From Acts chapter 9, verses 13 through 22. And this is about the Apostle Paul, the one who performed so many miracles, did so many great things, evangelized so much, but also spoke in tongues more than anybody else, saw the visions that nobody else seen. He testifies him, <laughs> this himself, lived a godly and pious Jewish life, and left for us in the Bible as an example, as a model for us to imitate. It's the very beginning of his story. So, he, he saw Jesus, Yeshua, appear to him. 
on the, on the road. And he became blind. As Jesus, Yeshua, told him who he is. And he was brought to a place he could sit in his blindness. But God started talking to Ananias about the Paul. Just go to Paul. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he did to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the sons of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias departed and entered the house. And after laying his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, Shaul, the Lord Yeshua, who appeared to you on the road by which you were coming, he sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales. And he regained his sight, and he arose and was baptized. And he took food and was strengthened. Now for several days he was with the disciples who were at Damascus. And immediately he began to proclaim Yeshua in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. And all those hearing him continued to be amazed and were saying, Is this not he who in Jerusalem destroyed those who called on, his na on this name and who had come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests? But Shaul kept increasing in strength and confounding the Jewish people who lived in Damascus by proving that this Yeshua is the Messiah. Listen, people were asking this question. Is it true? Is it this man? How is it possible? This man was sent to kill, to capture to imprison those who believe in Yeshua. And now he preaches Yeshua. How come? How is it possible? Very easy. And the reason is in the text. He was filled by the Holy Spirit. And it changed everything. Well, I know that it's time the congregation considers itself to be the spirit-filled congregation, right? I heard it on a number of occasions, and I love this statement. But I'm adding something to the common definition of being spirit-filled this morning. And this something is, if you don't preach the gospel, if you don't share the great and mighty works of God with the people around you, in your marketplace, in the stores, in your recre with, in, during your recreation activities, studies, neighborhoods, and so forth. Please don't talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't work this way. The Spirit of God came to make us His witnesses. He gives us the power. He gives us everything what we need. You may come here to its time 
and be so spiritual. But it's not what proves that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. When you are at your workplace. That's what needs spirit. Here, in Eitzheim, you need to have a chutzpah not to sing. You need to have a chutzpah to sit when everybody stands up to worship God. Only God knows the hearts, by the way. Here, you need to have chutzpah to be not pretending to be a believer, you know? But when you work somewhere, you need a different kind of chutzpah. You need to, a different kind of courage. It's very easy to be quote-unquote filled with the Holy Spirit here in this room. But try to be filled with the Spirit outside of this building. Live by the Spirit of God your entire life. It's easy to pretend here because it's the right atmosphere. But the real challenge and where we need the real power is in the real world. Amen. In the secular and even hostile world yeah. around us. Yeah. But that's what the Spirit of God wants us to do. Do like I do, says God. The Spirit of God comes to impact this world and to lead this world into the divine presence and transform this world into God's righteousness. Amen. And the Bible says, when the Spirit comes, you will do the same. Just be filled with the Holy Spirit and open your mouth to share the gospel with the people around you. Not just in this building. Most of us, we know the gospel, praise God. But in other places. Well, I'd like to remind you, there is no other way to God but only through Yeshua. Amen. And in Yeshua, there is a quality new life that will never cease. Amen. And we experience this life. And we have this confidence we are with him because the Spirit of God gives us that. Listen to the previous two drushes in its time if you missed last two Saturdays. And learn something about the Holy Spirit. And then live it. Live it in your daily life, particularly, and I would say even primarily, by speaking of the greatness of God outside, not just in the congregation, but where you live 24-7. And then, maybe in some book, in a good book, it will be written about you and me. He or she was filled by the Holy Spirit and preached the word of God with boldness. May God bless you. Amen. I love to pray. Don't expect the walls shaking. But let's expect ourselves to be filled with the Holy Spirit and preach the gospel with boldness. Avinu Malkeinu, our Father, our King, we are so grateful for your mercy. We are grateful for salvation. We are grateful for Yeshua. We are grateful for the new life. We are grateful for the giving of the Spirit. We are grateful for the fact that we are filled with your Spirit and the power of God is in us. And every time we testify, and you testify about this power when we preach the gospel to the people who don't know you yet. 
bless us. Bless us with supernatural courage. We don't need anything else besides Yeshua to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We don't need more power because the power is there already. But Father, give us courage to open our mouths and to talk to the people around us about your greatness, about your love, about sin and about judgment. But first of all, about your salvation in Yeshua, our Messiah. We are grateful for the spirit that impacts this world. And we pray, help us to work with the spirit and through the spirit and to change this world in the God's space. We pray in the name of our Messiah and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Thank you.